Guys, a quick word about sudden cardiac arrest. It's actually one of the leading causes of death in the United States and is said to be 900 occurrences per day. It's also said that when you combine effective and efficient CPR using the AHA guidelines along with emergency cardiovascular care, the uh, chances of survival in a patient whose heart has stopped improve dramatically. Now let's not forget the four key elements, which is early access, which is basically early initiation of 911, early CPR, early defibrillation, and early advanced cardiac life support and advanced life support procedures. As I said it once before, and I'll say it again, patient care should always be BLS before ALS, and for cardiac arrest, it's not it's not an exception. Uh, pharmacological therapy is definitely uh, necessary but it should also be accompanied and complemented by non-pharmacological therapy like CPR. I'm going to show you how to get a return of spontaneous circulation or improve the chances of getting a return of spontaneous circulation in a patient who's suffering from a pulseless VTAC, VFib, or pulseless electrical activity cardiac arrest so I would say the first thing you have to do is remember to follow your American Heart Association guidelines and you could use a video like this or any other one that you could find on YouTube that's a credible source as an aid to help you remember things and so when you arrive on scene and you got a patient in cardiac arrest I would say the first thing you should do is just uh, keep your cool even though this is the type of call that um basically this is bad as it gets um i would say just keep your cool as much as you can uh and remember that if you're not cool or you you're you're not your composure is not that of a calm person and the he the scene is hectic you're just adding to the chaos so try to keep your cool as much as possible put the monitor or your AED on AED hook up the pads to the wire that's here it's compatible ventilate the patient measure and apply a OPA as long as it's indicated and ventilate the patient with rescue breaths on the ALS level put the person on the three lead use the electrodes put the person on the three lead once you intubate the person remember to put them on the capnography also, one more diagnostic tool you could use is the BGL. Make sure to use the BGL, especially for the PEA arrest. Get the IV. You could also do the intraosseous. Remember to flush and make sure the line is patent. Here are the medications. We're going to save that for last. Uh, another piece of equipment that you can bring is your suction. Make sure it works. Make sure you have your tubing and bring your ALS intubation kit you can use a bougie as an assisted device make sure you have different size tubes one thing about intubation that I could mention is especially when you have a patient who's a hard tube um, one thing I've noticed that helps me is that I instead of like forcing or trying numerous times with a 7.5 I'll go down to a 7.0 um, so I'm not afraid. I'm not. I'm not afraid to downsize the tube, as long as I get the tube and it's successful. So that's a little tip for you guys. Another tip I could I could give you is that when you're administering numerous medications, especially in the cardiac arrest, you don't want to go rushing for a flush every five seconds or every time you administer medication. Better stated. So what I would do is you could just put put the liter bag, spike it with a 60 drop set, and leave it at a KVO rate. Or just open it when you give the medication and use this wide open when it's time to flush the medication. Now, when you try to intubate somebody and it doesn't work, you use a smaller size tube and they're still uh, have you're still having a difficult time intubating the patient after propping propping them up on pillows and you try your best, then you could always use a last resort, which is the king tube. Alright? So as far as the medications that are used, uh, remember that while all this is going on that I mentioned, uh, try to multitask, 
use your resources on scene, use the firefighters, uh, talk to your partner, whether the partner is a ALS or BLS, but just keep a communication with your partner and everybody on scene. Uh, if you're working by yourself, what I would do first is obviously BLS before ALS, right? I would, if, if you're getting equal chest rise with the BVM and the OPA, I would continue to leave that uh, if it's working, obviously. And I would jump to the medications and get the IV access. So do a BGL if you can, if someone could help you. Then go get the IV access or the IO access. And the medications are as follows. Basically, when you arrive on scene, you confirm that it's a V-fib arrest. Then you uh, shock the patient. Obviously, like I said, look at your AHA guidelines. The medications you give are epinephrine, 1 to 1,000. And amiodarone, 1 to 1,000. Remember, this is not immediately. This is after a couple of cycles of CPR. Right, so this is given every three to five minutes, and this is given as a bolus of 300 milligrams uh, IV. Right, so you could call medical control for further guidance, and the options for medical control in the New York City New York City region is the bicarb, magnesium sulfate, the calcium chloride, and PEA arrest. You basically are going to withdraw the mag and the sorry the mag and the amiodarone because the etiology of the arrest is probably different on this case so these medications are the ones that are going to be most useful so the reason why you want to give the epi is because it's 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 been noted that it increases uh, organ perfusion during cardiac arrest the calcium chloride helps combat a possible hyperkalemia Remember your H's and T's. The uh, sodium chloride helps combat the acidosis, the pre-arrest acidosis that the patient suffered. The dextrose, especially in the PEA arrest, is useful for patients that you take their BGL and it's below 60, you could give them some dextrose. The amiodarone is useful because it's an anti-dysrhythmic. And the magnesium sulfate in cardiac arrest, it's not 100% understood why it helps, but it's definitely one of the main treatments for Tershad's de points. All right, so the, one of the things that makes amiodarone so useful is that it allows the prolongation of the QT interval and the action potential duration. So if you have a person that's in V-fib, and remember the little squiggly lines that you see in V-fib, this will help uh, eradicate it as much as possible. Now remember the dosage is initial dose is 300 milligram bolus and then telemetry for 150 milligram. Calcium chloride helps eradicate the hyperkalemia and it helps stabilize the myocardial cell membrane but it also reduces the risk of the ventricular fibrillation. Alright so from beginning to end BLS before ALS Put the patient on the monitor, remember to get the capnography, get the BGL, bring the suction because some, some airway, some air, some intubations are difficult just because you're not able to visualize the cords because of the secretion. So always remember your suction, get the IV or IO access, remember the medications, get intubation, use the bougie if possible, and you could also use the saline with a 60 drop set as an extra large flush instead of using a flush every single time. And refer to your protocols, the epi is every three to five minutes. Uh, one more thing is keep your eye on the monitor up here. You should see a clock and try to, try to be very, very, very conscious of the time and when you give your medications and how fast you give them. Because when you give them and the timely administration of the medications, could make the difference between a return of spontaneous circulation and or if not. Now when you put the capnography, one more thing I could mention is that if your initial capnography is 8 or 9, it's, it, it, it's confirming tube, tube intubation, successful intubation along with equal bilateral chest rise along with visual, visualization of the cords. Now if for some reason 
all of a sudden the capnography goes up to 40, then I would say it brings up, uh, turns on the light bulb for a possible return of spontaneous circulation. So if you got the capnography on, and like I said before, it goes up from let's say 10 to 40, then check for pulses as, as soon as uh, as soon as possible. And if you have a pulse back, then you get a blood pressure on the monitor. You do a 12 lead and proceed according depending on the uh, 12 lead results and the blood pressure. All right. I can't think of anything else that I'm missing, guys. I hope this helps. I know it looks kind of messy, but um, these are all the things or some of the things that are utilized in a cardiac arrest. And these are some of the things that you need on scene to better the better the chances of return of spontaneous circulation. I hope this helps, guys. Please share with somebody that you know might need this. And please subscribe. Leave your comments down below. If you have any videos that you think you might want me to do, please let me know. I'm at your service. Have a great day. Peace.